So I shot my first wedding around about, let's say, three and a half years ago, something like that. And I shot with a zoom lens, and I have a lot of zoom lenses for me to use. I, I own a hell of a lot. But there's so many wedding photographers out there who say, well, all I'd use is primes. So around 18 months ago, when we were told that we can now start shooting weddings again, I bought myself a prime lens. The prime lens that I bought was a Sony FE85 f1.8. And you know what? I really, 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 really like it. Now you can pick this specific lens up for just under 500 pounds here in the UK, but if you wanna get a different version, like if you wanna get the F1.4 from Sony, I'll pay a little bit more. You can get the Tamron, you can get Sigma. There's many different variations out there. You don't have to get the Sony, but it's the Sony one that I use and I'm really, really happy with it. So in this video, I don't wanna talk about this specific lens. There is more to life than just Sony. If you wanna shoot Tamron, that's absolutely fine. But 85 millimeter has become my must have lens when it comes to wedding photography. And I'll tell you exactly why. So first up at f1.8, it has a super wide aperture. Now you can get f1.4s and f1.2s, but f1.8 is just the right amount for me. I don't want to miss focus at any point and then the photo is ruined. When people turn around and say, oh, my camera never misses focus, you're wrong. It does. Even my camera misses focus and I will happily hold my hand up and say it does. But f1.8, 1.4, 1.2, whatever you want to shoot at, you don't have to be afraid of shooting in low light. There are some wedding venues and I'm shooting one in two weeks time I think and it's so so dark there's only windows on one side and fairly low down and probably the sun's going to be on the other side so you get no actual proper true window light so shooting at f1.8 is sometimes the best option and the only option you have to keep the ISO nice and low and keep your shutter speed really short and snappy but the great thing I love and this is very cliche because every photographer out there will say this but f1.8 or less you get that creamy blurred out background and with having a creamy blurred out background or bokeh then it allows your subject to just pop off the background and you don't have to think about any isolation as such at 85 millimeter the lens itself the optics inside it will do that for you the compression of 85 mil is for me it's just about right i love the way it treats the background and it kind of goes back to me saying that it makes your subject just pop out of the photo. What compression does is allows anything in the background to look much larger than what it actually is, which means that you only have to deal with a small amount of the background, so therefore you don't have to worry about any distracting features. And then 85 millimeter, because you have the really small, shallow depth of field, everything just looks great. The 85 millimeter is fairly telephoto as far as wedding prime lenses go, being the 24, the 35, the 50, and the 85, probably being the most common ones with maybe a bit of 135 thrown in for good measure. So 85 millimeter, you can shoot across the room and never really get in anybody's face. So therefore you don't really get anybody spying back at you like you're spying at them. They don't see you and spot the camera and go all weird on you because that ruins photos. An 85 millimeter is good for the ceremony, it's good for the vows, it's good for the speeches. It's good for any moment that the couple is the center of attention and all the eyes are on the couple. I work alongside my friend, my colleague, who also does photo and video alongside me at weddings. And the last thing either of you want is somebody with a 24 mil just creeping up on the couple. Getting all up in their face in the middle of the shot this is something you don't want. It becomes intrusive for the couple at their special moment, but you're also distracting the whole of the guest party, no doubt. So the 85 millimeter is something that I'd be happy to use for maybe 85% of the ceremony, if not more. There's no pun intended with the 85. But obviously the 85 millimeter does have some drawbacks. I never use an 85 millimeter for prep, like never. I find it a little too zoomed in, a little too telephoto. And for the prep of the wedding, whether you're with the bridal party, the groomsmen, it's gonna be a busy, environment for you to be in and in that situation I'm wanting to get all up in the action there's two reasons for that firstly your photos look a lot more natural and you can be more engaging with the people around you and secondly I've met the couple at least once or twice before the wedding but the actual party they're with I've never met them but they need to feel comfortable with me being around and me sneaking off into the corner of the room to take photos on 85 millimeter will not do that and with the 85 millimeter I'd have to get all up in the corner on my tiptoes just to be able to get any kind of photo because sometimes the rooms are really small so in them kind of situations a 24 or a 35 is much nicer to do the photos with and then maybe have a 50 lying around for key details 
But regardless of all of that, an 85mm is one of the best lenses to use when it comes to portraits and weddings. But for the moments I'm not using an 85mm, I'm using a 35mm. And you can check out the video right here where I talk about my 35mm lens. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, then hit the like button as it allows me to show this to more people out there on YouTube who may find this information really useful just like you have. If you want to see more content like this, then hit the subscribe button. And if you do, I will see you right there. Thanks for watching.